wait for the ramp, Morty. They love the slow ramp. It really gets their dicks hard when they see this ramp just slowly extending down. Greetings! Morty, you gotta flip them off. I told them it means peace among worlds. How hilarious is that? My name is Cole Downey, and today I'll be discussing the show Rick and Morty. Yeah, if you haven't seen it already, you've likely heard of its grotesque and equally hilarious segments. Originally the brainchild of Justin Roiland, the first manifestation of the characters came in the form of Doc and Marty. The short was an attempt to poke fun at Universal Studios, in hopes of eventually receiving a cease and desist letter. Okay, Marty, here we are, in your front lawn 30 years ago. Roiland later turned away from this goal as he began to enjoy voicing and writing the characters eventually partnering with Dan Harmon after he was fired from NBC's community. The two were employed by Adult Swim to create a new full-length show. Despite some minor hurdles including Harmon's hesitation with animation and Royland feeling burned out from several failed pilots, the two wrote the entire first draft in six hours. The show follows a fairly basic formula. The alcoholic grandfather bends dimensions in order to solve some ultimately selfish goal, which is then interwoven with more domestic issues arising from a fractured family. What truly defines the show, however, is its style of writing, shaped strongly by Dan Harmon. Rising above the classic animated show script, Rick and Morty attempts to combine an extreme sense of comedy with a deeper message that goes beyond a simple family hug. But we'll get into that later. One significant facet of the show is the speaking pattern of the characters. They sound as if they're coming up with lines or belches on the spot. Justin has said that when he is recording the voices, he'll read the script through once and then mark where he wants to burp. Then he'll go back a second time and fill in the belches. Now listen, I need your help, Morty. I mean, we got we gotta get get the hell out of here and go take care of business. It's important. Come on, Morty. Oh no, Rick. He also admits to setting the script aside at times and letting the characters finish the line as seems natural. No. Well then get your shit together. Get it all together and put it in a backpack. All your shit. So it's together. And if you gotta take it somewhere, take it somewhere, you know? Take it to the shit store and sell it. Or put it in a shit museum. I don't care what you do. You just gotta get it together. Get your shit together. This provides for an emphasis that is extremely unique to the show, and often provides for some of the most notable quotes. This improvisational setting finds its way into other parts of the show at times, most notably during the episode Rixty Minutes, featuring several different zany monologues. It's in theaters now, coming this summer. Two brothers in a van, and then a meteor hit, and they ran as fast as they could. From giant cat monsters, and then a giant tornado came. And that's when things got knocked into 12th gear. A Mexican armada shows up with weapons made from to tomatoes. And you better bet your bottom dollar that these two brothers know how to handle business. In Alien Invasion Tomato Monster Mexican Armada Brothers who are just regular brothers running in a van from an asteroid and all sorts of things, the movie. But you get the point. Another defining factor of this show is the emphasis on realistic characters in an otherwise completely fictitious world. In the first episode of the show, Rick and Morty jump through a portal to a reality where Morty is forced to smuggle mega seeds through intergalactic customs and fool giant insect-like security guards. Okay, next through. Except you. You go over there. Why does he have to go over there? Random check. He's got to go through the new machine. What new, what new machine? It's a new machine. It detects stuff all the way up your butt. In this same episode, the characters grapple with the effect these adventures are having on Morty's academics, the rift between Rick and the family, and the possibility of removing Rick from their family altogether. Issues that many families have dealt with in some form or the other. These issues are masterfully combined with a set of characters who are not always happy or always sad, but consistently battling with the dual forces of the universe, further proving that Harmon's characters are dealing with issues that the audience can truly relate to. And this leads to my final point. Perhaps the most impressive part of Rick and Morty is the unexpected philosophical themes highlighted in a way that can't be done without the complex and comical scientific notions that the show is founded in. In one such episode, and here's a minor spoiler alert, during the first season, there's a split second where all seems lost. Instead of saving the world, however, Rick and Morty open up a portal to a dimension where they had just recently died. 
Rick explains to Morty that because there are so many different dimensions, one's choices and their effects become essentially meaningless. They bury their own bodies in the back as Morty is left to contemplate the significance or lack thereof of recent events. Dan Harmon's unique writing is developed around one core principle. The audience is bored of being spoon-fed. Easy jokes, simple situations, and 22 minutes that gives them nothing but a mediocre laugh. These two have attempted to create a show that exceeds these expectations and leaves the viewer with something substantial to think about after the credits roll, animated or not. I can only hope that more producers take this approach in the future with comedy or even animation in general. Again, this is Cole Downey. Thank you for watching.